Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody. Joe McGee here with the Heroes of Faith, where we're going through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, reading stories about people who believed in God, normal people, just like you and I, same strengths and weaknesses we have, but incredible faith, did amazing things for God. And so that's what you love. That's where faith comes from. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God, hearing that normal people, just like you and I, did incredible things for God. Today, we got a great one. It's called Simon Meets Philip. Man, this will make a great TV series. <laughs> great story. God shares everything. This is an Acts. Chapter 8, Simon lived in the city of Samaria. That's about 30 miles north of Jerusalem. The people all over the country uh, brought thought that Simon was a great person, for he did tricks and magic, and they couldn't understand what he was doing. And he was he was very impressive. He was a great uh, party favorite to have at a party. So this man, they said, had the power of God. He's got the power of God. No, he's doing magic tricks. But they thought he had the power of God. Then Philip came down to Samaria and preached that Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God was one, and then uh, uh, was and he's one of the seven men that had been chosen to care for the poor. Now, it was not safe for believers to stay in Jerusalem. Most of them had gone elsewhere. Wherever they went, they told about Jesus Christ, and this new religion spread real fast. Since Philip had little to do in Jerusalem, they traveled about preaching the gospel. The Samaritans listened eagerly to his preaching. They never heard the story of the gospel anywhere. As they saw Philip work miracles in the name of Jesus, they marveled at the great power God had given him. Many men and women believed Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and they were baptized. Simon, too, heard about Philip, and he came to see and to hear and watch when he preached. Uh, From Jerusalem, he healed the sick. He made the lame walk. Simon knew that he could not do these things. Why? I'm a fake. I'm a fake magician. I can't do these miracles. And so he, too, uh, believed and was baptized. But Simon was so impressed by the miracles that Philip did, he followed them everywhere. Perhaps he thought, you know, I don't know, Philip had a new kind of magic. Perhaps he could learn how to do the same miracles Philip did. News reached the apostles in Jerusalem that many Samaritans had accepted Jesus Christ as Savior after hearing Philip preach. So the apostles sent down Peter and John. And as soon as Peter and John arrived, they went to find Philip and the new believers. Peter and John laid hands on the new believers and prayed, and these people received the Holy Spirit. So you got a twofold thing going on. Simon was amazed. He watched him and the kind of power that Peter had and John had because he was used to buying those things that he wanted. Simon offered the apostles money. Hey, guys, I'll write you a check. Give me this, too. I want this power so I can lay my hands on a person and they'll receive the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to lay hands on somebody and see them get the Holy Ghost. Peter was indignant. He's mad that anyone would try to buy the Holy Spirit. To Simon, he said, may your money die with you if you think God's gift can be bought. You don't have any part of this in your heart. Your heart's not right with God. Repent of your sins and pray to God for forgiveness, for there is still sin in your heart. Simon was just frightened beyond measure. He begged Peter, hey, pray, pray to the Lord. Pray, pray this thing won't happen. So after the apostles had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem. Throughout the village, they passed, they preached to all who would listen. All the way to Jerusalem, more believers were added to God's church every day. The angel of the Lord appeared to Philip and said, get up. I want you to go south to the road that goes down to Jerusalem and Gaza. And Philip obeyed. Now, Philip was not the only traveler on the road that day. A royal chariot was headed south toward Ethiopia. The head of the queen's treasure was returning home. He had been to Jerusalem to worship God. In his hands was a scroll of the book of Isaiah. 
Only a man of wealth and position would be able to have such a book. Go slowly, the Ethan said to the driver of the chariot. I want to read. Then he drew up the parchment, the possession, the Bible scroll. Oh, how he longed to know God better. This is a, this guy who loves and fears God. On and on he read. But the eager look on his face became a dark frown. What does this mean? When Philip saw the chariot, God's spirit spoke to him. Go and catch up with the chariot. So Philip ran beside the chariot. He could hear the Ethiopian reading from the book of Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? And the very disappointed Ethiopian said, no, how can I understand when I have no one to teach me? So he invited Philip to ride along and explain the meaning of the strange words. You know, God's word will create its own hunger. It's amazing. He said, he was, uh, he was led as a sheep going to slaughter. As a lamb before the shear is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. His story, who can tell, for his life is taken from the earth. Whom is the prophet writing about, the open they asked. Is he writing about himself or some other man? Philip used these verses to preach to him about Jesus Christ, was made to suffer and die. Jesus was the lamb as quiet for the shearers, so Jesus said nothing to those that wronged him. The Ethiopian, Ethiopian, he had not heard the story about Jesus before, so he listened eagerly. Not only did he hear one and believe what he heard about Jesus Christ, he was thankful that Philip had come along. At least he was learning the very thing that he had longed to understand. As they rode along, they came to a place where there was water. The open said, see, here's some water. What keeps me from being baptized? Philip said, well, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. Oh, I do believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the man replied. He commanded the servant to step to the, down the chariot. The Ethiopian and Philip climbed out of the chariot, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Ethiopian saw Philip no more. All the way to his homeland, he rejoiced as a follower of Jesus Christ. He was eager to tell the people of Ethiopia about Jesus. Beginning at Nazareth, Philip preached the gospel to all the towns that came until he came to Caesarea. Now, that is an incredible story. There's a lot involved in that. You know, Philip uh, is one of the seven who's waiting on tables, uh, but he still has an anointing on him. He, st- he still knows Jesus. And so he's out and about. Now, the persecution came. They had to scatter out of Jerusalem. They're going everywhere. So he's just out wandering around, but he's still a minister. So he's still preaching the gospel. And not only is he preaching the gospel, he's laying hands on sick people and they're getting healed. Things are happening, miracles are happening. So this guy who's a sort of a charlatan, he's sharp. I mean, everybody knows him in town. Simon, he's, he's got a name for himself. You know, he's invited to parties and entertain and do whatever. He realizes, man, this guy's got the real thing. This guy's got the real thing. How do I get this real thing? So he asked, he said, man, how do I get this? So he got born again. And he said, man, I need this Jesus. And, but, but he wasn't hungry. He still wants to have, the, he wants some, he wants the miracle stuff. How do I get the miracle stuff? So he offered to buy it. And so he gets rebuked. Man, you can't buy God. God's free. You, you don't earn him. You don't buy him. It's a free gift. It's called the gift of grace. And so he, he was supposed to say, no. So he gets rebuked. And so he realizes, no, this is a free gift. So Philip realizes he gets that thing settled down. All of a sudden, he's down there on the road and he, he's this chariot's moving really slow. So he's walking faster than the chariot's moving. Because the guy in the chariot, the Ethiopian, he said, man, slow this thing down. I'm trying to read here. So he had a scroll from Isaiah. Now, to even have a scroll, you got to have money. Nobody had scrolls back then. It wasn't like you walk into a bookstore. There's not a bookstore in every corner. Uh, if you were a scroll, you are a wealthy person. So he has a scroll of the book of Isaiah. And he's trying to read it. Of course, Isaiah is a phenomenal book. Uh, I don't care if you've been born again one day or, or, or 50 years. Phenomenal read about God and what his intentions were about the gospel. And it talks about Jesus coming to earth. I mean, it's just phenomenal. So he's reading it, and all of a sudden he gets to a point. He said, I'm, I don't understand. This, I, I'm lost now. I believe it. I believe in God. You know, I, But what does this mean? So Philip asked him, said, do you understand what you're reading? He says, no. He says, would you like me to explain it to you? He said, yes. And so he tells him the gospel story about God sending his son to earth to die for mankind, that God tricked the devil into killing him. Because Jesus had never sinned. He didn't deserve to die. We deserve to die. We were sinners from birth, you know, from our father, Adam and Eve, you know, goes back to the beginning. But he had never sinned. 
And so God suckered the devil into killing a son who did not deserve to die. And since he had not sinned and did not deserve to die, his death paid for our sin. That's why today you don't have to have a bull or a goat or put anything on the altar. It's our faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross. Jesus took my sin and put it on the cross with him. And he went to hell for three days, and God raised him from the dead. That's how you got born again. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for you, and that God raised from the dead? Well, if you believe that, Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says you'll be saved. And it's not a burning bush. It's not a, it's not a big wind. It's just, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that he died for you? Yes. Do you believe that God raised from the dead? Yes. Well, then you're born again. It's that simple. And so all of a sudden he realized that and said, man, I want that. How do I get this? He said, well, uh, you said, do you believe this? He said, yeah. Well, then uh, he said, well, what, what's the next step? He said, about water baptism. He said, well, what do I need to do to get water baptized? I said, nothing. You're ready right now. Well, here's some water. Can we not do it right here? And so they passed the water. They both get out of the chariot. Philip takes him in the water, lowers him down, and brings him up. Well, when he came out of the water, Philip had just disappeared. Hey, where'd he go? Well, he's gone, but you just got born again. You just got your name written down the Lamb's Book of Life. And, of course, he goes back to Ethiopia. Now, I'm an old Bible student from been studying for years. Great revival came out of Ethiopia. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was in Jerusalem, uh, it was from my last trip over there, uh, there was a lady that was running a, an orphanage above the Sea of Galilee. And in this orphanage, beautiful buildings, and, and uh, it's looking down on the Sea of Galilee, and so in this orphanage, there's a grass hut that's sort of out of place because the buildings are beautiful. And what is this grass hut? It's like something from Africa. And this lady said, well, yes, that is the kind of hut that I grew up in in Africa. And we're asking questions. What? Because she's from Ethiopia. Now, she's Jewish, but she's from Ethiopia. And so there we're questioning. So, well, yeah, I grew up in a grass hut. But we had heard the gospel our whole life. We prayed toward Jerusalem every morning because that's where Messiah came from. We prayed toward Jerusalem. We believed in Messiah. And so I don't remember if you remember that when the Jewish uh, flew all those big military planes in Ethiopia for 24 hours, trying to get out as many refugees as they could because the king let them go. So they're landing these planes in the desert. And she tells the story how we walked for days to get to the place in the desert where the planes were going to be so we could get out of the country. And so we packed on that plane like a sardine can. They take off out of the desert. They fly home. And we landed in Tel Aviv. And so she said, when we landed in Tel Aviv, we're all from Africa. We're Ethiopians. We're all black Ethiopians. We get off the plane. We went totally quiet. And so the Jewish lady who's our guide, going to guide us through the process, we all went quiet. And she said, why are y'all so quiet? And the Ethiopian lady said, who are all these white people? And she said, what? Because they're at the airport. And the lady said, who are all these white people? What are you talking about? We thought all Jews were black. And that's an actual honest statement. She said, we thought all Jews were black because the Ethiopian Jew said, no, they're black, white, Japan, Korean. They're, God's got people everywhere. They're, we're scattered to the four corners of the earth. And so she built that grass hut. She went to Hebrew University. Uh, she learned how to do the orphanage thing. So she's in charge, very well spoken. But she had that grass hut in the middle of that compound to remind her, this is where I came from. God's been so faithful to me, and the Word of God held us and, and guided us and brought us here to the promised land, and it was an amazing, amazing story, but the same thing with Philip. It's what the Ethiopian said. How, how do I get born again? Well, you know, you believe Jesus, Son of God. What do I going to do next? Get water baptized? And as soon as he did, Philip disappeared. Well, the Ethiopian went back to Ethiopia and spread the gospel. It was a miracle. People say, how does God get where he needs to get? God's got ways you cannot even imagine. There are stories you can't even imagine. So many. The Bible says there's so many things that Jesus did in his three and a half years of ministry. There are not enough books on this planet to write all those stories down. But God gave us enough in our Bible to let us know God's moving. God loves people. He wants to get born again, go to heaven. He wants to be a blessing to everybody you meet. That's why I love to read the Word of God. It builds faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Bible says, without faith, you don't please God. Without faith, you don't defeat the devil. Faith is critical. So get your Bible open. Start building that faith up. And start getting hungry for the Word of God. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening today. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. 
He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, JoeMcGeeMinistries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.